So would you send a member of your family to your A&E? Yes, definitely. I have not worked in the wider hospital. Okay, I've only worked in the emergency department. But in terms of the emergency department, we just deliver very good care. Have you had any injuries that made you go to A&E? Um, I fell off my push bike and broke my arm and ended up in our own emergency department. Um, I had very good care, a little bit of time off work. Um, but yes, it was all good in the end. Do you ever find that people arrive with injuries that are not appropriate for a &E? It's hard to say what's appropriate and not appropriate. But if you don't have the knowledge, the knowledge of what is and isn't appropriate, then you might think it's appropriate to come here, you know, come to the emergency department, whereas we may be able to redirect them to a more appropriate service so they still get seen, but it's about educating as well. So we're lucky that we have a GP service that works with us in the emergency department. And then that helps us to keep a good flow through the department so that we can look after all of our patients. What are the busiest hours in A&E? All of them. There's no fixed pattern, so it can be a Monday night at 10pm yep. versus a Saturday night at 1am. So there are certain things that contribute to the business of the department. Sometimes mm -hmm. big sporting events, England playing football. Yeah, that cleared that it quite are, nicely. That cleared it nicely, but then after the match, we had an influx of patients. Um, when people get paid, so pay weekends, bank holiday weekends, because you've got an extra night of or day of socialising, etc. So you get and accidents. also with the bank holiday, people feel panicked that they're not going to be able to get to a GP for four days, as opposed to maybe the usual two days of a weekend. So they all come in on the Thursday or the Friday with things that perhaps could have waited to see a GP. How do you deal with people who arrive at A&E but find it hard to communicate if they're, you know, drunk or distressed or have some kind of, like, um, problem? You have to assess and treat everyone um, in an individual case. way. Yeah. If it's a translation problem, so a language barrier, so if someone's visiting um, and English isn't their first language, we have a service that we can access that's that will translate, etc. So yep. some some uh, system called Language Line. So they will act as a sort of a mediator between you and the patient, so you can find out what's going on. Because half of the challenge is finding out the history of what's brought them in for you to be able to manage. If we have children in, mm -hmm. we can call the paediatric ward. They will send down trained people, play specialists, that will interact with the children, so it's less stressful them. for them mm -hmm. in that way. We have learning disability nurses, we have mental health specialists that yeah. we call over that come over and assess the patients. And it's about remembering that all patients are people, that you're a person. I might be a doctor, but I'm a person as well. And thinking about how you would like to be interacted with, how you would like to be spoken to, what you think might calm you down if you're distressed. Sometimes it's something as simple as offering them a cup of tea, an arm on the shoulder. Um, Sitting them somewhere more quiet rather than yeah, leaving them in a busy waiting it, area. The, there's often, there's no special formula to a lot of the stuff that we do. For an average injury, how long does it take to go through the process of treatment in A&E? What we have to do, every person who comes in with an injury gets an assessment, okay? and based on that assessment and the severity of the injury that will determine your treatment time so and there are a lot of other factors as well that will come into play but mainly it's you need to be assessed you need to have investigations if you need them so maybe x-rays maybe blood tests and all that does take time that i I don't think there is an average time. So if you come to the emergency department and there are five patients waiting to be seen, your time's going to be probably significantly quicker than if you came in and there were 35 patients waiting to be seen. There were eight ambulances queuing to offload their patients because they're equally as busy. So if you are critically unwell or critically injured, you will get seen as a priority. 
Okay, and as we went, as we said earlier, if you're waiting, it probably means that you're safe to wait. Do you find that people are stressed by the time that they are given treatment and does this affect your ability to treat them? Some people don't like waiting, so they get a little bit upset. Some people are fine with it. And does it affect my ability to treat a patient? No. I think you can you can put at bay some people's anxieties about waiting if you give them information about what's going on. So if they come in to the reception desk and you say, we're going to book you in, you will be seen. However, we are currently at a two hour wait. They have an expectation that they are not going to be seen in the next 30 minutes. So if I were to come to a and &E as a 14 year old, if I were to come to a and &E without a parent or guardian, uh, would you be able to treat me without an adult there? And how would that process work? You would be treated. Yeah. So if you were found knocked over at the side of the road and you were 14 and you had not because you'd fallen off your push bike on the way home from school, etc., and you needed treatment, you would be treated. We will treat you in your best interest to keep yeah. you alive. But equally, your parents would be contacted, contacted or yeah. your guardian or your, you know, whoever's responsible for you would be contacted. Could you sum up your department in one word? Why do you think that? I would say lively. <laughs> it's good fun, generally, yeah. most of the time. Yeah. From yeah. A I don't think there is a single word, if I'm honest. Um, an emergency department is a complex beast. Um, it has many different facets, which are coloured by what you see on a daily basis. Every day is different. Yeah. You have good days, you have bad days. I'd say variable, but I'm not sure that does it justice. Yeah.